Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride. Welcome to another video. Today's video is sort of a part two to Wednesday's video. I'm going to talk you through how I scan my artwork, specifically watercolor paintings, into my computer and how I edit them in Photoshop so that I can then print them either on regular printer paper or on sticker paper to put them into my bullet journal. I will link both my December plan with me and the painting walkthrough slash tutorial in the cards and in the description box so you can check out those videos if you haven't seen them just yet. So once you've created your artwork, if you're painting, you're going to want to leave your painting to 100% fully dry before you attempt to scan. The scanner I have is attached to my printer. I believe this is a pretty old printer, but I also think they're still selling this one. Though I am absolutely sure that there are cheaper and more portable, smaller options on the market these days. If you don't have a scanner, you can also take a picture of your artwork. I find scanning much easier because I don't have to worry about making sure that I'm taking my photo completely straight on and that the lighting is even. But if you don't have access to a scanner, taking a photo is gonna be your best bet. I highly recommend making sure there's nothing on your painting and also nothing on the glass of your scanner before scanning. I feel like this seems pretty obvious, but I often forget and I end up with cat hairs scanned onto my painting, which are pretty easy to edit out, but it's easier to just make sure that it's clean in the first place. If you're working with watercolor specifically, you may find that your paper ends up warping a bit. I feel like every watercolor painting I've ever done has ended up warping the page at least a little bit. And this can cause sections of your painting to scan darker or slightly blurry, those areas that are warping away from the glass. If it's not too warped, you're probably gonna be able to just pop it down on the glass and pop the lid down and be good to go. If it's more warped, you may want to put pressure on the lid throughout the scanning process or use a heavy book or some other heavy object that can apply pressure to the entire painting to make sure that it's fully pressed against the glass while scanning. I also highly recommend that you use watercolor paper that will fit onto your scanner. If you have paper that's larger than your scanning area, it's gonna be a lot harder to make sure that there is full contact to every part of the painting. So I personally use nine by 12 inch watercolor paper, which is just slightly larger than my scanning area. So when I'm creating a painting, I make sure to leave a margin around the edges of the paper so that I can trim the paper just a little bit before I scan it to make sure that it fully fits on the glass. One of the most important things after making sure that your painting is in full contact with the glass of your scanner is customizing your scan settings. Most scanners are going to automatically be set to scan at a relatively low DPI, and DPI is dots per inch, which correlates to how many pixels you will have per inch. The higher the DPI or the more pixels you have in an image, the higher the resolution of the image. And if you're scanning a painting to edit it and print it back out, you're going to want to have a pretty high resolution image so that when you print it out, you don't get any pixelation, you don't get any blurriness or softness to the image. I typically choose to scan at 1200 DPI and I find that this is sufficient for my purposes. You may need to play around a little bit with this on your own computer with your own scanner. These are the specific settings that I like to use to scan my artwork with my specific scanner and my specific computer and process. I would recommend that you save your scan file as a PNG if you have that option. If not, you can always go with the JPEG. You'll wanna check your scan after you scanned to make sure that everything looks good, that you got an even scan, that you don't have large areas of blurriness or odd color variations. If the scan looks good, it is time to open it up in Photoshop so that we can edit. All right, so here I've opened the scan in Photoshop and you can see there's a single layer, which is the scan. It's set as the background layer and it's locked. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is create a new layer to become the new background layer. So I will create a new layer by clicking layer, new layer. I then unlock 
the background layer by tapping that little lock icon on the right side and drag it above my new background layer. The next thing I want to do is straighten out the painting. So I'm going to select the layer by hitting Control T on a PC and just rotating it till it looks as straight as I can get it. Once it's straight, I'm going to use the crop tool to crop in the edges to get nice crisp lines. So you can see the crop tool there on the left side and I'm just going to drag it in and zoom in around the sides to make sure I'm cutting off any weird areas where I didn't quite get a straight line. Once that's done, it's time to start adjusting and doing the bulk of the editing. The main goal here is to approximate the real life painting the best that I can. So I find when I scan, it usually ends up a little bit less contrasted, a little less saturated than it is in real life. So here in editing, I'm trying to bring it back to its former glory. I usually will edit the painting with the original painting right in front of me on my desk so that I can compare and make sure I'm kind of on the right track. I'll typically start with brightness and contrast, and usually the brightness is fine, but I will up the contrast by quite a bit. Next, typically I'll go into hue and saturation and up the saturation. I may also need to adjust the lightness to darkness or potentially also the hue if the colors aren't reading accurately to how they look in real life. And the third adjustment I always use is curves. I will darken the shadows and brighten the highlights. I find with my specific printer, I need to go a little bit further on the contrast and saturation than I would maybe think I would have to, because when I print, especially on regular printer paper, it prints a little bit less vibrant, a little less contrasted than it looks on the screen. So I will typically go a little bit further than I feel I need to. And usually when I do that, once I print, it looks pretty close to the original. Once I've done these basic adjustments and I feel that the colors, the contrast, the brightness all look as close as I can get them to the original, it's time for me to go in and fix any little mistakes that I notice, little things that stand out to me that I want to fix before I print. Obviously this will depend on the painting. Every painting is different. Every painting needs different things in editing. I chose this painting specifically because there were a few different things that I needed to fix. So I was able to show you a few more techniques. So the first thing here is that I missed a cat hair that was either on the painting or on the glass of my scanner. There's also a weird shadow on part of the snow here that was a bit more textured and it left a shadow in the scanning process. I like to use the healing brush tool to fix a lot of little mistakes on my painting. So I alt click on the source. So what I want to replace an area with, and then I click on the area I want to replace. So I alt click on some of that clear snow with no cat hair, and then I'll click on top of where the cat hair is, and that will replace that little section with the area that I selected. I'm doing the same thing here on the shadow of the snow, selecting clear snow areas, and then clicking and dragging over the shadow to replace that shadowed area with the source that I've selected. I'm also going to use this technique to fix up the doorway. I didn't quite get the yellow all the way to the edge because I was worried about the colors bleeding together. So here I'm source clicking a section where the yellow and the brown come right together. And then I'm clicking on the areas where there's a little bit of blank white space to fill that in. And as you can see, it's replacing that section with the section that I selected and just filling it in to make it look nice and clean. I'm also extending the door down a tiny bit. This can be a little bit finicky, but I like to clean up these tiny little things just so that the end result is a little cleaner and neater. I have a little water spot here that I didn't notice while painting. So again, I'm just using my healing brush tool to get rid of that ring to make that section blend in a little bit better. I also have a darker area here where I'd made a little mistake in painting and tried to cover it up, but I didn't really blend it in very well. This was the hardest section for me to fix 
to my satisfaction. So you can see I try a lot of different things. I try selecting sources from many different parts of the cabin. And this took quite a bit of back and forth and trial and error to get it to a place where I was happy. I could have just left it because it is part of the painting and the painting is meant to be rustic and imperfect, but it was bothering me how dark that section was. And I really wanted to bring it more in line with the tone of the rest of the cabin. So I decided to keep trying to fix this area. As you can see, I didn't like my first solution. So I undid a lot of that to kind of start over. Control Z is going to be your savior in Photoshop if you're on a PC. You can also, of course, adjust the size of the healing brush tool, which can be really helpful. So you can select the size that's most helpful for the area you're working on. I typically find the smaller the brush, the better the result. But again, it depends on the specific circumstance. Here I'm trying to replicate the horizontal lines of the logs in this section. I realized that that was my biggest issue with that section was that it was all just one dark spot with no real dimension and adding the lighter and darker stripes that happened throughout the rest of the cabin helped to blend that section in a little bit better with the rest of the painting. I'm not a Photoshop expert. Everything I do in Photoshop, I've taught myself or my husband has shown me. So there may be an easier way to do this that I don't know, but this is how I do it. And I'm happy with how that turned out. I don't want it to look perfect or like a repetition of another area of the cabin. I do still want it to look irregular and natural and weathered. So I'm happy with that result there. So I'm gonna stop with the healing tool. And now I'm going to open the original so I can show you a comparison between what I scanned into my computer and the final edit. So here is what I scanned and here is the final edit. The scan, the edit, the scan, the edit. You get the idea. So those are all the edits that I do in Photoshop. I will then save the Photoshop file if I wanna go back in and edit more. I'll also save the image typically as a PNG with the highest possible quality. And from there, I can just print it out on printer paper or sticker paper and pop it in my bullet journal. I hope this video was helpful for all of you who requested it. This again is just my process for scanning and editing my artwork. I would love to hear your process if you also are an artist, if you also like to digitize your art, what process you use, do you use a different program, is there one tool that I'm not using that I totally should get on board with? Let me know in the comments and also let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd want me to create more of a tutorial style video on. I'm happy to make more videos in this vein if they are interesting and helpful to you. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I highly recommend you go follow me on Instagram if you're not already. Something exciting is happening next week and I'm gonna need my Instagram followers help to make it come to fruition. So definitely go follow me there. I'm gonna take a minute to thank my patrons for their support. Extra special thank you to our newest patrons, Danny, Trudy, Sonia, Sarah, Megan, and Susanna. Welcome to the squad. We are so excited to have you. If you at home wanna join the squad, check out the link in the card or in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you very soon in my next one. Bye friends.